Hello everyone. In today's episode, I'll be solving a fun Sudoku that is rated hard, but once I found the remote pairs and the XY wing, the whole puzzle fell apart. I was going to show you how I went through this step by step, but then this video would be way too long, so I'm going to fast forward over the step by step part until I get to the good stuff, the remote pair and the XY wing. Okay, so let's go ahead and fast forward to where I decided to fill in all the candidates. And here is the grid with all the candidates filled in. Along the way, I was also able to place some numbers using beginner strategies. Please let me know in the comments if you would rather I showed you the step by step and not skip over it or rather start the video later in the solving process when I find the good stuff. And now let's see if I can clean this grid up a bit by eliminating some candidates. Here in column one, I have a one six matching pair and I also have a three five matching pair. So that means no other cells in column one can be a one six or a three five. So I can eliminate the one and the six from this cell and this cannot be a one. So now we have another matching pair in column one, a two and a nine. And now in block seven, there are two fives here in the same row. One of these has to be a five. So these are what's called a pointing pair and that means there can't be any other fives in the same row. So I can get rid of this five. And in this last row, I have a one six matching pair. And that means that the one and six has to be in either of these two cells. So I can eliminate the one and the six from any other cell in that row. So I can eliminate this one and this one and six. Okay, and um, so we got rid of this six here. So now the only place a six can go in this row is here. So this cell has to be a six. By the way, that is called a hidden single. And so now I can eliminate this six here and this six here. So now in block nine, we have another hidden single and the only place a six can go in this block is here, which means this cell is a one and then this is a six and I can get rid of the six here and also the one. Oh, and I can eliminate this six also. And now I have a matching one, two pair in the row. So that means I can get rid of any other ones or twos in that row. And so let's get rid of this. And so now I have a one, two matching pair in column eight and a one, two matching pair in column three. So let's see how that might work. If this is a one, then this would have to be a two and then this is a one and this is a two or the other way around if this is a two then this is a one and then this is a two and this is a one but either way the two green cells here would have the same number and the two red cells would have the same number right and so the green and red cells have opposite numbers. One has to be the one and the other is the two and it doesn't matter which, but one of these cells is a one and one is a two. So any cell that sees both ends of this chain, this is a chain, any cell that sees both this green and red cell, any cell that sees both can't be a one or a two. Okay, let's see if there are any cells that see both. Okay, so this cell sees both ends of the chain, and so this cell can't be a one or a two, so I can eliminate the one from this cell. And here I have another cell that sees both, this one here, and I can get rid of the one here. 
that was great. And by the way, this technique is called a remote pair. And I have a video tutorial on that if you want to check out that technique in more depth. All right, now let's see. Oh, I see something. Yes, there's an XY wing here. All right, take a look at this. With an XY wing, we have a cell that is called a pivot cell, and that is this 2-9 cell, and let me highlight that in green. And those two numbers, the 2 and 9, are called X and Y. And now, if I can find two cells that see the pivot cell with the X candidate in one, and the Y candidate in the other, so this cell sees the 2-9 pivot cell, and it has a 2. And this cell also sees the 2-9 pivot cell, and it has a 9. So I have two cells that see the pivot cell, and both cells have one of the XY numbers. One has the 2 and the other the 9, and they both share the Z candidate, the 1. So let me make those two cells purple. All right, so the two and nine in the green cell are the X and Y, and the one purple cell has X and Z, another candidate. In this cell, it's the two and the one. And the other cell has Y and Z, and that's the nine and the one. So both purple cells see the green pivot cell with the 2 and the 9, and one has a 2 and the other a 9, so we have X in one and Y in the other. And then they both share another arbitrary candidate, in this case it's the 1, so we have a classic XY wing. These purple cells are called pincers, and so the Z candidate, that's the one, can be eliminated from any cell that sees both pincers. And so this cell has a one in it, and it sees both purple cells, right? It's in the same row as this cell, and in the same block as this cell. So the one here can be eliminated, which means this cell is a two. Let me try to explain that a little better in case it wasn't so clear. Uh, let me highlight this cell and make it yellow. And now let's follow the logic here. If this green cell is a 2, then this purple cell is a 1, and then this yellow cell can't be a 1, right? So that's one scenario, but let's say this green cell is a 9, then this purple cell is a 1, and then again the yellow cell can't be a 1. So either way, no matter what the green cell is, a 2 or a 9, one of the pincers has to be a 1. And therefore the yellow cell which sees both pincers can't be a 1, and therefore it's a 2. Great! And so now this is a 1, and column 8 is done, and now I think the whole puzzle is going to unravel. And that eliminates these ones. And because of this two, I can eliminate this two. And this can't be a two. So now this cell has to be a one. And I can get rid of this one and this one. So now this has to be a two. And that means this is a 9, and this is a 3, and this is a 4, and then this has to be a 1, and now the top row is done. And you can see how this is all coming together. Okay, what else? Okay, this is a 4, so this has to be a 9, and this is a 2, and block 3 is done. All right, and then this is a 4 which means this is a 7, and now this has to be a 3, this is a 5, this is a 4, this is a 7. And then this has to be a 5, this a 3, this a 2, 
And now this can't be a 2, so now we have a 6, 9 here and a 1, 9 here. Um, oh, this can no longer be a 4. And this is also, so this has to be a 5. And this, that makes this a 1. And this is a 9. So I can get rid of all these 9s. And now I have a naked single, a 1. Then this is a 5. And this is a 9. And now I can get rid of the 1 and 5. Oh, and also the 7. So that makes this a 4. And now this has to be a 7. And now this is a 9. And so this is a 4. Now this can't be a 4 anymore. So this has to be a 2 or a 5. And now this can be... And now this can no longer be a 5, and this cannot be a 9, so this is a 6. And so let's get rid of this 6 here, and so this is a 1, 2, 7. And now this can't be a 9, so it has to be a 6, and this is a 9. I should have seen that before. And we're almost done. This can't be a 7, so this has to be the 7. And now this is the 2. This can't be a 2. Or this. Okay, so this is a 1-9 pair. Now, oh wait, there's a 4 down here, so this has to be a 5. And then this is a 4. And this is a 2. This is a 1. This is a 9. 1. 2. And five, and the puzzle is done. So that was originally a hard puzzle made easy once we identified the remote pair and the XY wing. And without seeing those, I'm not so sure it would have come together. Give this puzzle a try and let me know what you think and review the remote pairs and XY wing lessons that I posted. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something.